Good evening, Muslim convert stories. My name is Matthew. I go by the name Lord Bear on YouTube. This is going to be a brief overview of why I chose Islam, how I came to that decision, how I'm getting on now. I had my Shahada two or three weeks ago now. I want to brief, brief this with, sorry, that there's no way I'm going to get through every single reason as to why I chose Islam, because it's kind of been a lifelong calling that I've had. I've been documenting my journey on my YouTube channel, which is already getting attacked by YouTube. A better way to describe YouTube would be The Matrix. My videos have started to blow up to a degree. A few of them have went semi-viral. My Shahada has nearly 100,000 views. Like I said, there's no way I can get through everything that I want to get through in this video because it's only about 10 to 15 minutes long. So if you want the rest of my reasons, I'm doing an eight part series as to why I chose Islam. It's going to be over on my YouTube. I'm sure the, the gents behind Muslim Reverse will put the links in the description. But let's get going. Salaamu Alaikum, brothers and sisters. If I had to give two reasons in a brief video as to why I chose Islam, it would be faith and law. I'm a young guy, I'm 21 years old. I live in Scotland in the United Kingdom. And the typical life path for people my age, and it has been this way for the past few generations, is one of hedonism, it's one of degeneracy, and it's a, a lawless life that we're fed, where it's have no love for your brothers, have no love for your sisters. Concern yourself with only what you want in the form of your own desires. Don't put your morality in what is right over your desires. Satisfy yourself and don't really care about anyone else. Since I was young, you've been, we've been fed the idea of atheism. And atheism is something that has not been backed up by any proof through scientific method. I mentioned this on my other channel, on my channel, sorry, that there is the scientific method, which is you have a, an idea, you test it, you change a variable, and then you try to disprove it. And if you can't disprove it, you then have a law. There is a, a trademark term called the science, and the science is a trademark patent, and that's how they can funnel you with any form of propaganda. When you hear a term called the science, it's not scientific method, it is a trademark. So when they tell you that you are a monkey that comes from nothing, came from sludge in the dirt from an explosion 15 billion years ago, and that's how an eyeball has formed over billions of years of mutation, and that's how you get a child's giggle. I don't think so, I'm not signing off on that. There is no, when you make a claim, you have to back up the claim. The onus of proof is on he who makes the claim. If you're going to come to me and tell me that I'm a monkey that comes from nothing, and spinning around on a ball in infinite blackness with no purpose, no no reason to be here, no higher power at all, and I should just indulge myself and, and get what I can. You have to prove that. I don't have to disprove it. The claim is on he, the, the onus of proof is on he who makes the claim. So I believe this idea that we are mutated monkeys that have fornicated for so long, that we have planes in the sky, an internet connection, poems written, and the giggling innocence of a child when he is born. The reason that I believe we're told we are these um, mutated monkeys is because it brings in moral subjectivity. I noticed around me, and I don't want to say I'm different than anybody else, I don't want to make that claim, but there's a lot, there's lots of things I'm going to touch on as, as we go along. There's lots of things I've noticed as a young man that I find completely disgusting. Haram things that no one around me seems to care about. And I don't know if I have a deeper conscience than, ever, than the people around me and that's why I reverted and no one else has. But I think the problems with the modern day world, I think the way they bring it in is through this idea, this lie. Every cookie has a baker. This lie that we come from nothing and there is no higher power. Because if you convince people that they are just space monkeys who have no reason to be here, you will then, you then bring in moral subjectivity. You then bring in this, uh, this nihilistic, depressive existence where there is no reason to do anything. What you also do with that is you take, you take a brother who you would have fought for and learned from and created a great life with. You would have taken a sister who you would have protected and you would have cared for. You would have had a wife who you would have created a, a beautiful family with. But when you bring in this atheism idea, that brother... Who, you could, who, who could have been great service to you, who you could have honoured for your life, he now becomes competition. The sister that you could have taken care of, you no longer care now because everything is over-sexualised and this idea that you... Do you see what I mean? 
I'm having a hard time articulating it, the wife that you would have had, who you could have created a beautiful loving family with that would have gone on to last for decades and centuries, she's now just a girl that you would meet outside of a nightclub because why would you want to reproduce? Why would you want a family? There's no higher power, there's no one judging you. You might as well just lie to her, sleep with her and never see her again. And I think the, the fruits of that, that, that rotten tree, this rotten idea that we come from nothing, I started to realize that the fruits of that were poisonous. I looked around me and I realized pornography is completely legal in the West. And I'm not signing off on that. I'm not signing off on the fact that a young boy when he's 9 or 10 years old can get access to internet pornography even if he's not looking for it and be enslaved until he can beat it when he's 25 or 30. I'm not signing off on the fact that OnlyFans is now the fourth biggest career choice for women in the West. The same women who would have gone on to be community leaders, they would have gone on to be mothers and wives and great people are now deciding that they want to sell their body online for fiat currency. I then realized, as, long as, as well as I was saying with the fiat currency, I realized that our entire financial system is based on RIBA. The entire financial system and the whole world now is based on RIBA and debt, on fiat currency. And I thought, so all of my friends no longer want to speak to me because all they want to do is go to a nightclub and drink and try and hedonistically fornicate with women. All the women that would have gone on to be my wives are now enslaved by this attention hookup culture. I can't buy a house because the house market has inflated because of Reba and usury. And I felt like I was screaming, screaming in a, a vacuum for a while. I couldn't understand how nobody cared. I couldn't understand how the men of the West couldn't look at the fact that their daughters are being geared up to sell themselves online. I couldn't, I couldn't understand the fact that your children will never be able to have a family ever and will be in debt until they can pay it off when they're 90 and no one cared. I started looking into who did care, what countries, and this is after I discovered that the whole atheism thing was just a trademark of the science to get you to feel, to get you to feel like you're worthless, to get you to feel like you have no power, to get you to feel like there's no reason for doing good. You might as well snake everybody. You might as well use people because there's no one watching over you. There's no higher power. That guy who you're crammed in a cubicle with trying to beat to then sleep with, an, sleep with a woman, he's not your brother. You don't have the same father up in heaven. And I started to realize that was a lie. And once I discovered that there was a God, I started to look around me and question who are the people that are opposing this and since a young age I've been hit very hard with the anti-Islam propaganda and I started to, to connect the dots. The only countries in the world I could find where pornography was illegal was in Muslim countries. The only countries I could find in the world where riba and fiat currency were illegal were in Muslim countries. The only place I could find in the world where you weren't pushed this atheism, nihilistic, you're worthless idea that we come from nothing was Muslim countries. And I started to realize that the enemy of my enemy was in fact my friend. The same people who want to send me to war, put me in debt and turn my wife into a prostitute, they were the same people that were telling me Islam was bad. And then I realized that the whole anti-Muslim propaganda that we've been fed in the West was a trick. And it was to go get, it was to get us to go to war and pick up a gun and shoot our fellow brothers under Allah for banks because Muslims would not take sodomy, they would not take pornography, they would not take usury and riba. And that I realized that's all the Afghanistan war was, that's all the Iraq war was, this is all the, the American wars against Muslim countries was just because Muslims would not accept haram. Long story short, I'm, I'm part of a, a, a men's network from a certain man that I think 90% of the audience will know who he is. He's arguably the most famous man on the planet at the moment. Recently, six months ago, I'd say, reverted to Islam. I think you can guess who I'm talking about. We would have meetups in person. And ironically, th this network that I was a part of is quite an expensive one. It wasn't cheap to join. And it's like a, a um, where businessmen come together and exchange ideas. And I started to realize that when we'd meet up, all the successful men in Scotland were Muslim. And I asked myself, why is that? And it's because they follow the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. They don't take, they don't take fornication, they don't take usury, they don't take pornography, and so they excel. I began talking to them regarding my my fears. I feel like I have a fire inside of me, and I can't. Maybe it's a heavy conscience, but I can't accept the fact that when I have sons, they will try to enslave him. 
with his passions and they will try sell my daughters and the only people that would really give me an explanation and a solution were the Muslims that were around me and in, in return I bought a Quran I started reading and I'll point out in fact that the Quran wasn't the first first sorry religious text I started reading initially and I think it's just because of my ethnic background being a white male in Scotland in Europe I was initially drawn towards Christianity and I started to look at modern day Christianity and I started to realize it had nothing to do with the teachings of Christ. It's a churchy and institute nowadays where they push things like the Trinity which I made a video on the Trinity on my channel which became semi-viral as well and I spoke about what that does to a child's mind. When you make Jesus God you're bringing idol worship. When you make Jesus God and say he was crucified what you're then doing is is that you're saying no matter how closely you follow God's teachings men who are haram and men who are sinful will still have the power over you to kill you and in a young child's mind why would he want to follow the laws why would he want to follow God's teachings if men who don't could still have power over you I looked at the modern day church institutes and the hypocrisy of call no man father yet when you go into a Catholic church you call the priest father be fruitful and multiply, yet the, the priests and church can't have children. As well as a few others, the kingdom of God is within you, Jesus said, or Yahweh, as he was known as. Yet, you're told when you go into a church that that's the one special church, and if you don't go there, you, you're not going to heaven. I looked at the New Testament, which was written by a guy who claimed to have met Jesus after he said he was never coming back, with no witnesses at all, who completely rewrote the Bible, and it made it, in essence, modern-day Satanism. Jesus saved you for your sins, then rise and sin no more. All these Christians I spoke to forgot the last part about rise and sin no more. And the whole idea was, I can do whatever I want, I can condemn who I want, because Jesus has died for my sins. And in my opinion, that's no different than Satanism. You also know them by their fruits. And like I said, in Christian countries, in Christian countries, porn's completely legal. The entire financial system is based on usury. The music that is being fed to children to corrupt their minds and lead them down a stray path. You'll know them by their fruits. And I started to look at what countries do not allow this. Muslim countries backed by Sharia law. And I didn't give up on Christianity easily. I started reading all the banned books from the Bible. And then I decided the amount of translations that there's been, the amount of kings have rewritten the Bible. Kings who are not prophets rewrote the Bible to suit their agenda. Does that problem occur with the Quran? I noticed it didn't. One translation, one book given by Allah. Fast forward two weeks after reading the Quran, I swiftly got my Shahada done. And ironically, my Shahada is up on my YouTube. Um, I recommend you go watch it. I had a lot of comments in the video saying that it made them cry. Oh, it's a great watch. It's a great watch. We went into the mosque, and might I point out, as I said about the Christian church thing, about how there's only one true church and orthodoxy, Catholic, all this stuff. I can go to any mosque I want and be treated exactly the same, and I will treat my brothers exactly the same, regardless whether it's in America, Scotland, Pakistan, Dubai, anywhere. But we were in Dundee Central Mosque in Scotland, if anyone's familiar with where that is, uh, that's where I was. We went in, it was for Juma, and after Juma was over, I was asked to come forward and I gave my shahada and I did it in front of 80, 90 brothers and every single one of them. They didn't have to stay, they weren't asked to, but while I was doing my shahada, every single one of them stayed and watched. And when I was done, every single one of them came up to me. They comforted me, they said, welcome brother. They gave me their phone numbers, wanted me to come meet their family. It was a real brotherhood. So my next few steps now, I'm taking it slow. I'm starting off by, well, not really. I, I go at everything 100 miles an hour. But to accommodate that and stop me going overboard for the first or next two months, I'm just sticking with the Sunnah and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad and the five Salah prayers during the day. I want the, the five prayers to be habitualized. There is, sometimes I do forget. Maghrib, I'll, for, I'll forget sometimes just because I'll get into the flow of going to work. Uh, Asr sometimes I might forget it, but it's just because it's not a habit yet. But I'm getting there, I'm on, a, I'm, I'm on a, a nine day streak now with getting them. And then the other part of that is learning the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I think he is the example 
along with Christ, along with Yahweh, but the Prophet Muhammad uh, and, and Christ are examples. They are given the, the word of God to show us how we should behave. And I, I want to get as close to that as I possibly can because in the future, I w in the future, and I know this might seem overly ambitious, but I, I would like to see a Sharia form of law in the UK and in the West because I'm not going to tolerate um, all the degeneracy that my brothers, my sisters, my parents, my future sons and daughters, my future wife or wives will undergo. Mashallah, it has been willed and I feel fantastic. I have the greatest asset a young man could want. And I think I, I think whether I came to Allah or he called me, it's came at such a great time. Being so young, I'm only 21, and I can really bear some amazing fruits. Um, so if you've enjoyed this video, if you sat through the whole thing, I've kind of mumbled up my words a bit because I'm out in the cold, I'm a bit chilly, and I've, I've recorded a... A video today so if you liked what i had to say and you want to see more of what i've got to do uh, got to say sorry the brothers will leave my my youtube my instagram my telegram below i would advise you come over quickly because i've started to speak a lot about sharia law a lot about the reasons why i chose islam and i'm already getting attacked by the matrix i hope to see you again thank you for watching this Allahu akbar